All right, we've discussed a number of ways to build H bridges and so forth. A brother engineer in Africa wanted to know how could he possibly come up with an H bridge setup to handle 160 volts as he was experimenting with an electric car. Wow, in the past we have been stuck using optocouplers which only go to about 30 to 40 volts, maybe 50. Trying to find an optocoupler to switch on a MOSFET, particularly in the positive or high side of the H bridge, um, you just can't find them. They're not out there, it's a big headache. But there is a device that you can use to replace all the MOSFETs all of the transistors, all of the circuit building, and they're cheap, they're high voltage, and readily available. Let's zoom in on one. A solid state DC relay. 3 to 30 volts or so input will hook directly to an Arduino output this one is rated at 200 volts at 4 amps these are not triax these are these are um, MOSFETs that are built internal to the module these particular ones were two dollars and forty cents a piece In this case, I used four of them wired through this connector board. This is an Arduino motor control. I've programmed it to a motor control and it operates this motor. Let's zoom in on the motor so you can see the shaft turning. You probably heard it. It's fairly easy to hook up these modules, and I have some, they're out there rated at um, over 200 volts at 25 amps. I think they're five dollars and something a piece. Four of them, you could have a two, you could have a 200 volt, 25 amp, I guess, suppose, I suppose, H bridge. I wouldn't trust the 25 amp rating. I would leave it at if it says 25 amps, use it at 15 to 18. You, you, you can take your own risk. But let's look at the circuit, how the actual circuit is connected for using uh, solid state DC relays as an H bridge. Here are some illustrations of solid state DC relays. Both of these have an input of 3 to 32 volts DC. They connect directly to the microcontroller without driver transistors or optocouplers or anything else. And they are optically isolated input and output. On the left, this one will put out uh, 25 amps. On the right, this one will do 5 amps. This one here cost uh, on the right about three dollars the one on the left you can get them as cheap as I've gotten them as cheap as five or six dollars okay I mentioned this before but quickly again as you're building building this H bridge use some precautions stick a lamp on the VCC side use some LEDs as a load until you get the programming and hardware configuration correct. All right, here is the actual schematic that we are going to be dealing with. If you notice, these are labeled 2A and 2B. These are connected together 
And in the case of these two, they went to our, my, uh, they happened to be connected to digital pin 9, which I called LED1 in my little controller board. How does it work? With both of these on, we have current flow from the positive and negative of this. It'll flow through the positive and negative of the one I labeled 2A, from 2B to 2A. Make sure that you observe these outputs which have polarity, plus and minus. Make sure you have the polarity correct. It's that simple. Switch these two on. You create a path, and this LED up here happens to light up. Switch the other two on, 1A and 1B. You reverse the path. You get a current flow from the plus to minus of the 1A unit. It flows through the other LED and through the plus and minus of the 1B unit. Here is the actual schematic with the motor attached. You might want to put in a bypass capacitor. In fact, you could connect a another um, solid state relay, DC relay, between VCC and this and have a master power enabled that I've discussed in other videos. Again, if you activate unit 2A and 2B, you'll create a current path as shown by the arrow here. The motor will turn in one direction. Turn on 1A and 1B, you'll create a current path as shown through the motor in the opposite direction. You're reversing polarity. Whatever you do, do never switch on uh, 1B or 2B or 1A or 2A at the same time. That's a dead short and you'll blow up the system. Alright, as finally as another circuit alternative, you could use the solid state relays in the high VCC side, which is really a pain in the neck to build, having to use PNP transistors or drivers or you're limited on voltage or whatever. Remember, these units that I'm using here, a lot of them will go to use from 5 to 63 volts, but you can get them as high as 220 volts. Here on the bottom, you can use a couple of transistors or MOSFETs. But the, same, but the same sequence, 2A and 2B, have to be switched on at the same time. Or 1A and 1B have to be switched on at the same time. Does the exact same thing as this. And so I'll have the circuitry and a basic Arduino program on my website. Uh, thanks for viewing and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.